Hallelujah. What are some of my earliest memories of my mother? It was we hours of the morning, her up praying. And she had to do a whole lot of praying for me, I want you to know, to keep me straight. But she did. And it was good. Hallelujah. I remember my dad's prayers a whole lot. He was a prayer. He was a seeker of the face of God. But I remember my mama, I mean, early in the morning. And I tell you what, those prayers early in the morning, a lot of times, perhaps when I was about to step into an area I, I shouldn't have stepped, the Lord would let that replay on my mind. I'd say, whoa, 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 I got to get out of here. I got to get, I got to get away from this. But I thank God regularly for a mother that was godly, for a mother that loved the Lord with all of her heart, mind, soul, spirit. Great lady, I miss her every day, but I promise you this, she's not missing me a whole lot right now. She's having a great, great time in the, in the Lord's world, and um, hallelujah. Brother Klein, it's so good to have you guys back. I was looking for Brother Klein right here. And it's good to have Bob and Shirley in church with us today. We love these people. Hallelujah. When I think about Shirley, I know this is horrible, but I think about that white cake where that, I can't, just Shirley. I just want to. I mean, I know you're a great lady, but I think about that white cake. That white cake is awesome. And one of my words, also mundo. I don't know if that's a word, but it sounds pretty good to me. Hallelujah. Well, um, there's no service tonight. This is a family day to spend time with moms. And um, we'll be back at it Wednesday night, be here. All of these ministries that have taken place this morning, Mother's Memorial, you cannot imagine the places that those funds go to, to supply things for missionaries, to build new churches in other areas. Friends, these things are important. And we don't do these kinds of things every week. We don't talk a whole lot about money. Uh, you just, this is a great giving church. We don't have to ask a whole lot. You just do it. And I'm thankful for you people every single day of my life. And I love every single one of you. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you from the book of Exodus today, chapter 2, verse number 1. It reads, And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived, and she bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a, a goodly or a beautiful child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes, and she daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And then she laid that little ark and that child in the flags by the river's brink. And you say, well, why in the world was all of this happening? Well, it was happening because all male children had been given a death sentence by the new Pharaoh. And the ones who were to bring death to these babies were the midwives. And yet the midwives, they just didn't like this deal. And so if you know anything about the midwives, they kind of went behind Pharaoh's back and they were looking out for these babies but anyway, um, so there was, there was ways they were trying to hide the babies and things like this. And so Pharaoh, the reason he did this is because he feared the Hebrews' numbers. They had been multiplying so quickly that they, they could rise up and they could take the kingdom from the Pharaoh. And so he says, no, we're not going to allow this. But I, I, with all of this said, I want to talk to you for a bit today on this subject, the instincts of a mother, the instincts of a mother. Lord, I'm asking you to help us today, speak to our hearts, direct us in faithfulness. Lord, I pray a special covering over our mothers today. I pray a special blessing upon each of them, Lord. You order their steps, make their way perfect, Lord, all through this service. 
Help me to do a good job to be clearly, uh, to clearly deliver this message today so that it can help people. I pray these things in the authority and in the power of the name of the Lord Jesus. And everybody said amen. You may be seated. I'm going to begin this morning with an article taken from Bible and Science. It really kind of encompasses everything that I want to say to you today. It reads like this, All creatures in nature run away from their natural enemies to avoid being swallowed up. However, the courage from the maternal instinct even makes the creatures go against that providence of nature. For instance, a giraffe attacks five hungry lions without the slightest sign of fear. A squirrel risks its life to fight a snake. It is only for one reason, to protect their young. In the sea, a shark that attacked a baby dolphin died by being butted to death by the mother dolphin. The the desperate struggle of the mothers to protect their young in the heartless world of wild animals is amazing and it is touching. Humans are no exception. A mom personally rescued her immature daughter who had run away to marry a member of a radical militant group. The daughter went to the group's operational base and very soon regretted her decision She then reaches out to mom, and yet the mom risked her very life again to rescue her. There there are many accounts that reveal the power of this maternal instinct. For instance, there was a baby who survived a horrible disaster simply because her mother covered her with her body. The mother was killed. The child was saved. There was a mom who was involved in a horrible automobile accident. Her daughter was trapped beneath the vehicle. The mother then lifted the car and saved her child. It was as though she had superhuman strength. You can easily find the power of maternal instinct everywhere around us. The article went on to say motherhood actually changes a woman's brain. Many moms say after having a child, they find themselves doing things that they couldn't imagine before giving birth. It was as if they had been reborn. For instance, immediately after childbirth, a woman experiences severe forgetfulness. The reason being her brain shrinks as she provides a huge amount of nutrition to the fetus. However, as time goes by, her brain is restored to the original state. At that time, the brain is reconstructed and its functions improve and it comes to have even better concentration than it had before. Craig Kinsley, a neurologist, conducted an experiment where he dissected the brains of late-term pregnant mice and discovered that their hip... I'm hoping I'm saying these words right. I'm not a doctoring major, trust me. But hypocampal neurons, which play a central role in learning and memory, had been rearranged complicatedly. It means that the mother's brain is reconstructed to raise the child well. Animal behavior experiments also show that mother mice respond much faster to food than nulliparous or celibate mice. And it's because the mother mice's senses of hearing and smell develop and they become agile. This applies to humans as well. Mamas may feel lethargic for the first few weeks after childbirth, but their senses improve and they come to have active responses to things around them. That is why they are always the first ones to notice their babies waking up and then getting up. Mothers quickly recognize the changes of their babies that other people hardly notice. 
Additionally, they become super women who play three or four different roles at the same time, such as cooking, talking on the phone, and taking care of their babies. All at the same time, it's amazing. Women suffer an inexpressible pain while giving birth, but, the ama but amazing enough, they feel deep peace after that delivery. This is due to oxytocin. Oxytocin is a hormone that relieves anxiety and helps them to love their babies. It also suppresses the secretion of stress hormones, improves their social skills, and strengthens their learning ability. As it was mentioned at the beginning, moms become brave for their children even in fearful and dangerous situations. It's assumed they do so under the influence of hormones, and yet it has been proven that two types of hormones are related to the bravery of mothers when it comes to their children. The anti-stress hormone oxytocin and the milk-producing hormone prolactin get rid of anxiety and fear. Friends, if you don't believe in a God, I'm telling you what, you, you need to get reacquainted you need, you need to go back and meet him, I'm telling you. Prolactin works in the brain, makes moms brave, say Inga Newman, a German neurobiologist who participated in the research of prolactin. The reason many mother mice get caught in the traps while their milk is produced is they search even in dangerous places for their young. In other words, it doesn't matter how dangerous it is, I got to keep an eye on my babies. The maternal instinct of living creatures is sacrificial and devotional. The mother's care coming from the maternal instinct helps her young survive in dangerous environments. Asian black bears give birth in winter when they hibernate without eating anything and survive the long winter giving milk to their young despite their intense hunger. The stories about mother dogs or cats which raise their young well even though they are homeless, this is simply instinct. Later it was proven that oxytocin is the very hormone that induces the onset of maternal behavior. The oxytocin hormone helps a woman get through labor and stimulates her body to produce milk. It also creates an emotional bond between mother and baby and encourages the mother to protect and to raise that child. Moreover, when mothers see the instinctive behaviors of their babies, they cannot help but love them. About a month after birth, babies babble and smile at someone looking at them. According to research, a child's smile helps produce dopamine in the mom's brain and makes her, the mom feel very happy. Now, when they're crying, <laughs> I don't know what that is. It makes them feel sad. Hallelujah. But when this happens, the mom feels more love for her babies. There are some reflexes that all newborn babies have, such as grasp reflex, which is to grasp whatever touches their palms. Embrace reflex, which is to try to hold on to someone when surprised. Rooting reflex, which is to turn the face to the stimulus. And suck reflex, which is to suck anything that is placed to their lips. These instinctive behaviors of the babies create emotional bonds between them and mom. Actually, their instinctive behaviors do not come from their special effect, affection toward their mothers. However, the mom who gave birth feels maternal instinct for the baby and spends much time with the baby. So the baby naturally shows the instinctive reactions to the mom, and the mom's love for her baby deepens. From six months after birth, the baby begins feeling affection toward mom. The mom and child have such an inevitable bond being predestined to love one another. It's been said that women are weak, but mothers are strong. Women may be physically weaker than men. However, they become stronger than anyone else for their children once they start being called by another name, mother. This maternal instinct is a source of strength that helps preserve and sustain human life. The maternal instinct has been handed down from the mother's mother, mother and from her mother and really initially from the Almighty God.
Really, we see a vivid word picture of this in our text. Let's read it again. And there went a man of the house of Levi, took to wife a daughter of Levi, and the woman conceived, and bare a son, and when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him for three months, and when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes, she daubed it with slime and with pitch, and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. You say, well, who was this mom? This was Jochebed, and her instinct was to hide her child at home as long as was possible. Yet when this became untenable, she forms this little boat. She then makes it waterproof, and, and she hides this tiny boat and child at the edge of the river and, and it's just floating there, and it's protected, and, and there's somebody watching, but that baby is, is really in a protected state, trying to keep prying eyes away. Then in verse 4 of Exodus 2, we find, And his sister stood afar off to wit would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And this lady, she just couldn't help herself. She had compassion on the babe and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for thee? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. You want to talk about a great, great hand of God working in this life. And then Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away, nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it, and the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. Jacobed, Moses' mother, defied Pharaoh's ruling. She maneuvered every which way she could to keep her baby alive. She then received her child again, being able to raise him as a Hebrew babe. And the only reason she had to return the child to Pharaoh's daughter was God's plan was to use this child for a great, great purpose. The purpose being to spearhead the liberty of God. God's people, the Hebrew nation. Friends, I want you to know God is such an intimate God. So God has plans, and I'm telling you, his plans aren't for, for people only like Jochebed and her husband Amram, but I'm telling you, God has plans for each and every one of you. God knows you by name. He knew you, hallelujah, while you were in your mother's womb. And you need to understand that God's got you on his radar. I'm, say, I'm telling you, God got you on his radar. We look at this account of Moses and we understand that this all began with a mother's instinct. Instinct is defined as a natural or inherited aptitude, impulse, or capacity, yet it's even more than this. Mothers, hear me now. Every single one of you have a natural, many would say even a supernatural, in, I'm talking about inherent aptitude, impulse, capacity for the rearing of your young. A lot of mothers today said, oh, the kids... I don't, don't know if I can handle it. don't know if I can raise them in this present world. I'm telling you, God can help you if you go ahead and take the plunge. God can, God can give you wisdom. God can give you the ability. You look at all of this world that's going crazy. I want you to know God's got his hands on every one of his children. So just take a deep breath. It's all going to be okay. 
And before it gets too bad down here, God's church is going to be called away. Amen. Amen. You say, but is this, is this, this instinct, is it just one way? Well, I don't think so. You've got this supernatural inherent aptitude, this impulse and capacity, but, but, but think about it like this. Far along life's path, when Moses came down from Sinai, the people of God, God's children have already been released. He's gone up on Sinai, but when he comes down from Sinai, what does he do? He gives the people the Ten Commandments. And just one of these God commandments is found in Exodus 20, 12 that is solely about the children. It reads, children, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So it starts off being all about the kids, but, but then it turns itself around and now it's about the parents. And how the children are to treat the parents and the respect and the admiration and the honor that they're to give to the parents. So it's not just a one-way street. I mean, the parent takes the plunge, but then it's supposed to be turned around and then the children give honor and respect and appreciation to the parent themselves. So let me read this again, Exodus 20, 12. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. We wonder sometimes why children find themselves in a world of hurt. Perhaps it's because they're not honoring their fathers and mothers as they should. We wonder how kids sometimes get off the beaten path. Perhaps it's because they... They haven't honored their parents as they should. The expositor writes, this fifth commandment means to treat one's father and mother with dignity and respect. There was, she's just mom. No, if it hadn't been for mom, you wouldn't be here. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, parent, children, you're to treat father and mother with dignity and respect. And so Paul denotes that this commandment is the first one with promise. Promise being that thy days may be long upon the land. As such, this command ought to inform and encourage God's people to respect age and to have care and consideration for the elderly, whether they're relatives or not. They've lived a while. They've got some experience. They've got a whole lot of knowledge in their heads. We're supposed to have a certain amount of respect for the elderly. Yesterday I came across eight ways that adult children can honor their fathers and mothers. First, be thankful for them. I'm thankful every day that I had a mom and a dad that served the Lord. Secondly, be patient with them. You don't know what in the world's going on in their lives that might make them a little impatient with you. So be patient with them. Third, listen to them. Amen, glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen to them. There's a reason they're telling you not to do things. There's a reason they're telling you to do things. Listen to them. Fourth, encourage them. And don't try to just, you know, beat their brains out. Don't try to control them. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the elderly. This is the way that children are supposed to treat. Don't, don't try to control them. Try to encourage them. And when they get older in life, sometimes people, people don't, they don't, they don't know which way to go, what, which, which way to take. And so as you grow in age, hallelujah, the roles can actually change a little bit. And maybe you can give them some direction. How about fifth, care for them. Sixth, pray for them to be blessed. Pray for your parents every single day of your life. Seventh, forgive them for the mistakes that they've made. I'm going to tell you something about parents. Parents aren't perfect, but most of them want to do a good job. And so if they messed up a little here and there, forgive them. Just get it under the blood. It's going to be okay, and God will bless you for doing that. And eighth, model Jesus to them. Maybe they don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Maybe they haven't been acquainted with the name of Jesus. 
So if you'll model Jesus for them, they might actually come that way. Another said this biblical command of honoring father and mother first appears in Exodus 20 as commandment number five in the Ten Commandments. The basic idea of the Hebrew word translated honor is to give weight to, and in the context of honoring your parents, friends, this makes good sense. They have weight because of the position they hold in your life And you really wouldn't want to be here without them, especially when you were young. If they were and are wonderful, wise, godly parents that only enlarges the weight they hold in your life. But even if they weren't, they still hold a weighty place by virtue of the fact that you again exist because of them. In fact, some psychologists have pointed out how there is something fundamentally wise about this commandment because to dishonor your parents entails devaluing and disliking your own existence. And that will create all sorts of issues which will make your life miserable. Thus, as with so many of God's commands, actually with all of them, honoring your father and mother is right because it is good for our sense of well-being. It enables human flourishing. Furthermore, the context of Exodus 20 is laying the foundation of God's covenant with his people Israel. This means the command states a covenant ideal. Thus, honoring your father and mother is central to being in and living out God's covenant. This same perspective is reflected in Proverbs with the many appeals to follow the instruction of your mother and father because the ideal is that they impart the wisdom of God. Does that make any sense? Here's some very important things that mothers teach their kids. One man said, my mother taught me about religion. She said, you'd better pray that comes out of that carpet. Another taught her kids about time travel. If you don't straighten up, going to knock you into the middle of next week. <laughs> Maybe your mother taught you logic when she said, because I said so, that's why. <laughs> Some mothers teach foresight. For instance, make sure you wear clean underwear in case you're in an accident. <laughs> Yay, I say unto thee. Certain mothers teach irony. Keep crying and I'll give you something to cry about. (laughs) Some mothers teach lessons on stamina. You'll sit there until that last bite of spinach is gone. Some mothers even teach about the weather. Your room looks like a tornado went through it. (laughs) How about mothers who teach about the circle of life? I brought you into this world. I can take you out of it. (laughs) At baby dedication, I had a young lady come up to me and said, "Don't, don't you believe in correction? I said, oh, yeah. I got plenty of it when I was a kid, believe me. (laughs) <laughs> How about behavior modification? In other words, stop acting like your daddy. <laughs> Some mothers teach in- lessons on envy. There are millions of less fortunate children in this world who don't have wonderful parents like you do. <laughs> oh, yeah. How about anticipation? Mothers teach a lot about anticipation. You just wait till I get home. <laughs> if you've been there and done that, come on, come on. I'm not getting any. <laughs> then there's the mom who taught her children about the roots when she said, shut the door behind you where you're raised in a barn. I've heard that a time or two, too. Some mothers teach wisdom. When you get to be my age, you'll finally understand. Some teach about justice. 
One day you'll have kids. I hope they turn out just like you. <laughs> and on and on it goes. I mean, I, I quit about halfway through, believe me. These pearls of wisdom. I'm preaching about the instincts of a mother this morning. Proverbs chapter 31, we find the instruction given to King Lemuel by his mother. We don't know much about Lemuel. He's mentioned twice in all of the scriptures, and yet many scholars believe Lemuel to have actually been Solomon. Whoever this mother was, she was a mighty sharp lady. Take it up in verse 10 where we find who can find a virtuous woman. For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of his life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar, she riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it with the fruit of her hands. She planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She pierceth or perceiveth that by her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. In other words, she steadies those who surround her. Verse 20, she stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. In other words, she prepares in lean times, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excelleth them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in her gates. In the gates. Friends, mothers are a precious gift. Hallelujah. And we need to appreciate our moms. We need to respect our moms. We need to care for our moms. You say, well, my mom wasn't everything that she needs to be, and that happens from time to time. But again, let's go back to that other part. Just go ahead and forgive her. Get it on behind you and do the right thing with your mom in spite of those things. But that's not every story. Most people have pretty good moms. And so we ought to honor our moms and love our moms and respect our moms and care for our moms. Because I promise you this, they are a valuable commodity in your life. If your mom's still living, you are very blessed. If your mom's gone, you've got your memories. So hang to them and love her still. Amen. Let's stand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our mothers were so important in our infancy. They should remain important as they grow older in life. And even long after they're gone. The lessons they taught, the direction they gave, the things we've learned at their feet can in most times last a lifetime. 
Think about how mothers pray for their children in good times and bad times and full times and lean times. Mothers pray for their children when they're in church. They pray for their children when they've been caught up in worldly things. And that mother's prayer sounds something like this. God, bring them back to the safety of the church. Save them from themselves. Save them from temptation. Save them from the flames of a burning devil's hell. Every single one of us who have and have had godly mothers owe a debt that can only be repaid when those moms see us walking down streets of gold and drinking at the crystal sea. No greater gift we can have, save God, than to have a godly mom. I want us to do something special on this Mother's Day. I want each of you mothers that are willing to come, I want you to come and stand in these altars facing the church, facing the church. Hallelujah, I want to give you something today. I want all mothers to come, and I want you to stand facing the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, church, I'm going to come by and I'm going to just, just, that's okay. Just, you can stand two in a row if you want. Let me slip by you, Sister Kathy, if you don't mind. All right, come on this way. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Now, I'm fixing to anoint these ladies with oil, and I'm going to pray the favor of God upon each of them. And I want you to just stretch forth your hands. And I want you to lend your prayer with mine. And I want us to pray a mighty blessing on these mothers today. Come on, let's do that right now. Lord, I anoint with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, I anoint with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus. 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 Jesus, Jesus, I anoint with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Si ala hoya hashaya bohokaya bohoya. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now, 
Lord God, I'm asking you to put your hands on each of these ladies, Lord, miraculously, Lord. Lord, I want you to touch them, Lord God. I want you to strengthen them, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Lord, I speak blessing. I speak favor. I speak a covering of the mighty God. Lord, I ask you, Lord God, in the future, Lord, to guide them in paths of righteousness for your name's sake, Lord, to open doors of blessing, to close every door that has the potential to be a curse, Lord. Lord, I plead again that holy blood of Jesus upon each of these mothers, Lord. I pray that you would bless, Lord, the fruit of their womb, God. I pray that you would bless what their hands touch, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would orchestrate their futures, Lord. I pray that you would guide them in ways that will astound them. I pray, Lord God, that you would just, again, put those hands upon each of these ladies and make their way perfect to God. Make, them, make their way your way, precious Savior. I pray this favor of the Lord in the precious name of the Lord Jesus and everybody in the house shout out amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. We love you.